Hi guys, this is Raquel with Paints and Glitter, and I am here again with you for part three of the series uh, that I am sharing regarding the Keepsake Book Dies by Tonic and the tutorial on how to assemble one of the mini albums. In this case, uh, as I shared before, I'm completing the one that measures five and a quarter inches wide by seven and a quarter inches tall. I shared with you how I assembled the cover and spine of the book and I also shared how um, some of the ideas that I used here for the pages even though I didn't share the assembly of them but I have two more pages to go on this video I'm hoping to share at least one and how to add it to the book because they will all be the same uh, eventually so let's get started okay what I have here uh, again is the same size page now in reference to that this is the second to last or second largest die from the collection it looks like this now as i showed you before it does not cut one of the sides it only cuts three okay so you have to determine the width of this size here once you've cut it out of your paper what i've done is as uh, i explained in the previous video is that because I knew that this book would be five and a quarter inches wide on the cover, okay, from here to here, it does measure five and a quarter inches wide. Then what I did was that I purposely cut these pages down a little bit smaller so that they'll fit on my spine and not compete with the thickness of the chipboard that I use. And I did share that that's, you know, this width is really going to depend on how thick your chipboard is or if you've even decided to use it. You don't have to. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this page here. I've pulled aside some papers from the collection that I'm using. Uh, if you're interested, what I'm using is from Crate Paper, a collection by, uh, designed by Maggie Holmes. So I've got some papers here that I'm thinking I might work with and I'm going to get started on cutting some. I think my base will be this color and then anything that goes on top will be that color. That's kind of how I work. I'm, I don't plan out my pages, so, just so you know. So um, anyway, okay, so I'm gonna get started on getting one of that, one of the um, coordinating pieces here. Now again, this comes with the size die that's going to fit right on top of that page, so I don't have to worry about it. I already know that that's going to fit right there. And I'm going to get that started, and I'll be back as soon as those are cut out, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay guys, I am back, and I've made some decisions. I've played around with the paper, and also cut out the pieces that I'm going to be using. Again, this is the five and a quarter by seven and a quarter inch size. I have the decorative pieces that fit on top of my page and here's what I was looking at. I decided that I wanted to cut two of the same size piece, pieces here, okay, in the same colored cardstock and what I'm going to do is create a little side pocket on this page, okay? So before I begin, what I want to do is because there's a lot going on here and there's also a lot going on on this page and they're going to be a Posing each other, I decided I'm going to make this a little bit more decorative but also kind of soft and subtle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set my book aside and I've decided I'm going to use this vellum that I have here that has glitter in it, of course. It's got little pieces of gold, copper, and silver. So I'll be using that. And I'm also going to be using a die from Tim Holtz that has this beautiful bird and flower cluster there. And this one that has the little flower trellis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through my die cutter. However, I am going to place this here. Now, you guys are seeing this upside down, but I guess I could do it like this. I'm going to place my die here because my pocket is going to be on this side. And then this one is going to layer on top like that. So I'm going to set this one aside and I've already sort of, you know, eyeballed this. I don't want this too far out to the edge and it's okay if they overlap. So I'm going to place a piece of washi tape on this one so just to hold it onto my base paper here. I'm going, you know, you can use a ruler, why not? 
make sure it's nice and straight. A transparent ruler is going to be your best friend in your craft room. So if you haven't invested in one, this one's from EK Success and I highly recommend it. It allows you to obviously see right through it and it helps with paper placement and, uh, and also with the dies. I think I want it right there and there's a reason for it. So I'm going to place my washi tape there. And uh, as I said before, I don't pre-plan my pages. This is all very organic. And um, I, t I take a look at what I have and I try to work with what I have. That's my only rule, of course. Um, and try to come up with creative ways to use the dies and all of that. So I'm running that through my die cutter. And what I didn't explain before is that this particular die does not cut through the entire paper. And I'll show you what I mean. It doesn't cut the edge at all. Okay, it only cuts the design. So I'm going to get this out. All right, so here's the item that just cut out of my paper, if you can tell there. And now I'm also going to cut out that bird. I'm hoping that this is helpful to some of you. I know, you know, the great majority of the people who craft already know a lot of this, but I figured I should share what, how I work. I may want to emboss it, but I'm not quite positive yet. Only because I want it to be very nice and dimensional. And I find that embossing them does give it that little bit of extra edge. That looks like this. It's a rubber mat that you just place on top of your die and paper. And it makes it a lot easier. Let's give that a look. Yes, that's much better. I don't know if... See what I mean? That is embossed now and it's just a little bit extra. I think for this particular book, because of everything else that's going on on that opposing page, I'm going to leave this white. I'm not going to ink it or in anything like that, which is very difficult for me because I love to paint. So in any case, this is going to go here and it's going to be very subtle. Okay, but before I assemble this now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my vellum piece here and I'm going to cut this out. Let's see here. It's going to fit exactly. Although I don't even need that big of a piece. Okay, I'm going to cut this down right to about there. And I'll run this through my die cutting machine. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I've cut the layering piece that's going to go behind this one here. So I want to make sure that that adheres very nicely. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add some wet adhesive and I think I'm going to use the beacon. Okay. And now I'm going to place my vellum here. I was trying to see if there's a shinier side to it, but I don't think there is. So I'm just going to place that down like so. And I'm going to score this paper now right on the edge here, and I'll show you why. So right where the, um, the paper has that little, let's see here, right where it has this little groove there on, the, on this little edge, I'm going to come in about a sixteenth of an inch from this little corner, okay? And this is going to help me create that pocket. And I'm going to fold this over now, like so. Okay. And now you could cut off the excess if you wanted to, because you don't need it to show on the other side. First I'm going to apply my dry adhesive on the edge before I cut it. And burnish that lightly. Before you take off the backing, 
bring it over to your guillotine or paper cutter and now cut off what you know will be the excess which is about a quarter inch that you don't need there so it'll measure four and a half inches wide okay there we go now now my friends we can do the uh, fold over here and if you see this it does have I'm going to do this twice because it has that vellum piece there and I want this to be perfect so I'm actually going to apply adhesive twice here okay there we go so I'm going to fold over the vellum onto itself and it doesn't have to be perfect it's okay if it's not then I'm going to apply adhesive again. There we go. Cut off the excess. And in this case, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. 45 degree angle is absolutely fine because this is just going to fold over like so. And then you can burnish it. What's important is that you don't have any leftover adhesive hanging out from that little edge there, okay? But this is what it's going to look like. I've created a seam. So if you know anything about sewing, that'll look familiar to you. A quarter inch seam on that inch. And here's the rest of it. And you can't really see the paper. You can see maybe a little bit of that vellum, but it doesn't take away from it. It doesn't look bad. If you're really finicky about it, you could cut down the vellum as well, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm only going to apply adhesive to the bottom side and top of this page, not that, that beveled edge that I just created. So I'll flip that around again. Now here's my base page that I'm working with, okay? And this should be the same all the way around. Um, what I want to make sure is that I adhere this onto this page now, matching that up, okay? So that way I have my little pocket on the side here. And because the papers are exactly the same, it's going to be very subtle and you won't really notice it. Um, so I'm going to. First, I think I want to center this here and adhere it. So I'm going to use my liquid adhesive for that. Now that I have this page adhered down, I can add my pocket page here, or my pocket element. All right, so again, adhesive only on three sides. Flip that over, match it to my previous page, and let's see, make sure it's lined up nicely here. I think I overlapped it a bit too much. Hold on one moment. I want to make sure it's perfect, so I'm going to go in this direction. And I think that'll help me. There we go. Edge to edge. And edge to edge here. Make sure none of that is overlapping or seeping out. Okay. Now I'm going to burnish that very nicely without crumpling the paper. And it's okay if those little corners weren't adhered in this instance because nothing's going to poke out of there really. That's not going to be a concern. If it were a shaker then yes, you would be concerned about that. But at this point, now I have my little pocket element, side pocket, okay? And it's all very cohesive and now I can go ahead and add my element here also before I glue it down to the page. I'll add liquid adhesive to this so that I can add this to the bottom as I had planned. Make sure I don't drop it. <laughs> okay. And any little strings I can I can take off once it starts to dry. I'm going to make this be down here toward the bottom 
And then what I do is once it's a little bit on the dry side, I'll go back with my rubber eraser and I'll, I'll remove any adhesive that's excessive there. However, we want to get this on this book already. So now what I want to do is flip this over and add some dry adhesive to all of my edges here because I want to make sure that this, um, the corners of my page are really, really nice and ad adhered to my book. Now I know I said that I was ready to adhere this onto my book, however, this is going to be the back page that's going to correspond with this one that I just showed you. So before I glue these together in my book, I want to work on this side. So what I decided to do here is that I'm going to create a pocket that's only going to cover half of this page. And the way that I'm going to do that is that I have my base page already cut out. I have my layering piece that's going to go here and also use another base page, okay? So that's exactly the same as this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the part here. Remember how only three sides cut off? I'm going to cut off this part here that I don't need, okay? Because I don't want it to be any wider than the one I already have here. Okay, so it's exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one in half. Now this I ended up cutting at three and, let's see here, about 14 sixteenths. Okay. Yes, about three and 14 sixteenths. Now what I'm going to do is this base page, I'm going to also cut so that it corresponds here, but I'm going to flip this backwards, like so, line it up, and use my ruler here. I'm gonna give myself about, let's see here, about a quarter of an inch there, and use my pencil. Okay, draw a line, and that's where I'm going to cut. Set that aside a moment. I'll cut here. Or three and three eighths, I'm sorry. And that will fit right here. Okay. So now I have this top piece, my bottom pocket and then a matching corresponding piece on top. So all you're going to see is that little beveled edge there or that, that little seam there. This part's going to go on the top of my page here. I'll set this down. Okay. My bottom decorative piece will go on top of this. Here, I mean, you can get really creative here. There's no reason why you need to make a completely straight edge, but this is just one option, of course, that I'm showing here. And you could do the same thing where you fold over the page like I did on the previous one, if you wanna look like that. Or you could leave it as is, and it looks just fine. So that's fitting there. Now I'm going to flip this over and apply adhesive on three sides. Remove the backing, like so. And now I'm going to line that up with the bottom of my page to be exact, and the sides. And there we are, okay? So now we have a pretty little pocket on that page, like that, okay? And I'll be able to slide a tag in there or a photo mat, whatever you like. And we have our corresponding pages now. So that'll go like this. And now we can get to the book. And what I'll do here is that I'm going to remove the backing of only one of those pages at a time, okay? So that when I go to adhere it, I have, so that when I go to adhere it, 
I'm able to gauge exactly where that page should be. What I like to do is I like to line it up with the previous page. And here's how I'll do that. And then I remove the backing here. And I know that this is not an exact science, <laughs> but this is how I do it. I like to apply some wet adhesive exactly on the same place where I have the dry adhesive. So I have my page and now I'm applying wet adhesive just on that one edge there. Okay, even though I did apply dry adhesive, I'm going right to the corners. I'm using my previous page as a guide as well as the bits here, the, um, the spine, okay? making sure that that lines up correctly and then I'll push in on that spine a little bit just enough to get it to tack there and then push in on that other side and you need to be you know work fast but also uh, be gentle with your pages and another thing to bear in mind is that you don't want it to be so close to that edge on the bottom that you can't turn your page, okay? So you're leaving yourself about a sixteenth of an inch from that actual uh, spine of that book. All right, and if it flops over like that, don't worry. You still have a little bit of wiggle room, and that's why I didn't use only dry adhesive, because applying that wet adhesive gives me a little bit of time there, okay? Now what I'll do is, see how it's standing straight up like that? I want to make sure that my corresponding page here also has wet adhesive on those little corners. So make sure that you have those corners with some adhesive there. I'm just going to create an X here in the center. Okay, and I'm going to remove the backing all of it from this particular page and now this is a little bit you know it's a little bit messy I guess but it's clear adhesive and I don't worry about it too much I'm just removing the backing here and of course you could remove the backing first and then apply the wet adhesive but that's just how I work. I'm going to take the backing off of this as well and this one leaving that third side to the end. Okay, I'm going to line this up. Actually I'm gonna take this off first, I'm sorry. There we go. Because I want to line up. I was working backwards and I apologize but I want to line up the top of my page here, not the bottom. I'm focusing here on the top because these are the sides you're going to see immediately. And I'm, it's difficult to film this. There we go. I'm having to pull it away <laughs> because I adhered it wrong. Here we go. Oh, one more side. It tacks really, really strong but I'm not going to worry about it. I want to make sure that it lines up perfectly on those sides there. There we go. All right, here we go. So it's okay that it removed a little bit of paper there. I'm not at all concerned about it because no one's going to be able to see that. All right, what I wanted to make sure is that I lined up that edge here. And I'll show you. Okay. I'm going to be able to press down on that and make sure it's fully adhered and all of my corners here now or all of my edges are fully adhered and the more you burnish it the better because you're also allowing that wet adhesive to kind of travel through that page. And I try to keep a baby wipe on the side here so that I'm cleaning my hands off of any adhesive that might get on it. But I'm trying to be conscious of the fact that I don't want that 
paper too close to the spine, okay? And the best way that I can find to do that is to align the top here. So once I've got one page laid here perfectly, then the other one is just going to match it or mirror it, okay? And I just keep doing this. I keep burnishing the corners, burnishing the, um, or pressing on it. And of course I pulled on it, so you see my page is a little bit wavy there, but that's okay because I can definitely press that out. So don't be too concerned if that happens. It'll dry flat, okay? And you can add clips if you need to. If it's really bad, you know. <laughs> um, now this little edge here, what I'm going to have to do since I pulled it apart, is I'll just go through here with a very fine pair of scissors and then cut off that little excess of paper that kind of is peeking out now. And it didn't damage the page. It just, because this is a heavy cardstock, it did pull away a little bit of it. But again, this is, you know, it's not lightweight paper, so it's not going to, you know, it's not damaged. There we go. It's just a little wrinkle in time. Okay. And typically when I'm not filming, I take a lo uh, much longer time. I take my time doing it so I don't run into issues, okay? Now, I can see that my page is going to open and close no problem. I see that it aligns with the top of my book and the bottom of my book, so I'm safe. I mean, <laughs> regardless of what happened on that one little corner, which again, I can clean that up really easily there. I can just add a little more adhesive, which I can do very quickly here, just a tiny little drop, which will dry clear. There we go. And my page is fixed. So now you can start adding the little elements here that will slide into your page. You can embellish all of that. What I have here is, oops, I have this, a couple little elements here that I picked out. I cut some pieces off with the same die set and what I also did was that I layered it with a piece of ephemera from the same paper collection creating a top folding page here and the way that I did that was that I layered the die right on top of a folded piece of paper allowing this edge up top not to cut okay and I adhered that folded piece of paper on top of another die cut piece that created this nice little card that I can use. I also use some shimmery tool that I have and again a die cut piece there. There we go. All right. Okay, so I apologize if my video seems a little bit cut off but I was having some interruptions with some background noise that I really didn't want <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that I showed you how I finished this uh, page here so I am decided to use a little bit of washi. Now I always see on social media posts like, you know, I have all this washi and I have no idea what to do with it. You know, I bought it and now what? Well, this is a good opportunity to incorporate washi into one of your uh, projects. Um, this one happens to be gold, which I think will match really nicely here. So what I've done is I've cut off a piece and as you saw, I just put some wet adhesive on my paper because I'm not going to make the assumption that my washi tape is going to stay on there forever. However, if I treat it just like paper and apply some adhesive, then chances are it'll be just fine. Okay, and I also used it on my little tag here that I showed you. Just a tiny bit there because I had moved my dragonfly and there was a tiny, the tiniest little dot of adhesive there. Well, guess what? it's gone. It's behind the washi. No one can ever see it. So, you know, just be um, creative with it. Just uh, use it where you need it and um, and use it as a... I try to look at it as a finishing piece um, when I'm creating things or layering piece. Um, 
I really love the way the colors look and uh, of course when they're shimmery like that it just ends in a, a special little touch to your projects I think. Uh, I could do the same thing here by adding it just to the edge there um, or anywhere really you know so I think I covered just about all of the pages I oh I didn't um, I didn't speak about the ephemera. I printed out some of the ephemera from the Maggie Holmes collection. I can't remember the name of it right now. I think it may have been Bloom, uh, but because this is Maggie Holmes paper, and I absolutely love her designs, I think they're really well thought out, and the colors are beautiful. Um, then what I did was that I used print and cut um, to cut some out so you would need a die cutting machine like a Cricut or a Cameo and I just layered them, I made them glossy, I added um, glitter to them and so that's going to be how I finish my book. I do have some acetate pieces that I'm planning to place on my pages as well. Here's another one, this is another Maggie Holmes ephemera piece. So what I've done is that I got out a stash of different things that I thought I would use on my book and I placed them in one of these little books. Uh, I've got some antique buttons. Um, I've got just different pieces here and what I like to do is get them ready and then apply stickles or glitter, whatever, you know. Um, there's this beautiful little piece here with the reindeer uh, or the little doe and then there's this little pink flamingo and what I did was that I added the little bow here to it and so that's what I'm going to use to embellish my book. <laughs>